Lynn, would, would you want to share the slide of the agenda just as we uh, kick off here? Sure. Just let me post it. That'd be great. <clears throat> just as like a guiding point. Awesome. And then I think we're good to go, right? I, I just uh, I was in the uh, the Aladdin Dow in uh, Decentraland. It looks really cool. Ah, there we go. Awesome. Okay. Well, here, I'll kick off then. So, um, hey, everyone, welcome. Uh, this is uh, one of, I think, our first Aladdin Dow community calls. It might be number one, unless I missed something in Discord a while back. Uh, and if you're new to Aladdin Dow, uh, think of it as it's a, it's a new protocol and community that is designed to bring uh, the best DeFi opportunities to the greater community. So the idea is that it's very difficult to keep up with all of the excitement in DeFi. You know, there's so many new uh, opportunities that come up. And so the, the vision behind this, and I'm going to let um, Sherilyn's going to talk more about this, but um, the, the grand vision is, is that it shouldn't be that challenging. It should be easy for anyone to quickly get involved to identify um, you know, better risk adjusted returns in DeFi. So uh, if you think about uh, assembling you know, the, um, the most expert minds in DeFi, whether they're, they're full-time yield farmers, they're um, investors running a fund, uh, they're you know, folks that are uh, participating in DeFi late at night after they get home from work, uh, the goal here is to bring all these minds together to help identify and curate those best opportunities. Um, so I can speak firsthand to having worked at Zapper and worked with lots of um, DeFi users at the ground level. This is one of the biggest challenges uh, for uh, new and existing users is where do I get started? And I, I think with what with what we're building here with Aladdin DAO, this, this easily can be one of those, those top tools um, that you look to, to, uh, to get started with DeFi. Um, so uh, just quickly, uh, the, the agenda today then is, is really just talking through the different bull candidates. And in case you're uh, not familiar with what bull is, you're not alone. I also did not know what the term was until um, I got to know the team here. Um, so a bull references, and I, I'm reading right off of Wikipedia, uh, it references a council of over 500 citizens appointed to run daily affairs of the city back in ancient Greece. So the idea here is if you're a, uh, a bull member, you, you've been identified and voted as someone to help curate which farms or uh, opportunities will eventually end up on the Aladdin Dow dashboard. So you can imagine in the future, if you're totally new to this, um, instead of having thousands of opportunities uh, to look through, the idea is that you're looking at uh, what have been identified as better opportunities by those that you trust are more expert to, to find those, those DeFi opportunities. Um, so anyways, we're going to talk through everyone's uh, uh, backgrounds here that are interested to be bulk uh, members. Um, so there's about 20 in total. And then... Uh, uh, beyond that, I, I, I'm going to pass it off here to Sherilyn to talk more about uh, just the, the grand vision behind uh, Aladdin Dow. So, um, Sherilyn, do you want to take over from here? Sure. So, thank you, Deepa, that. Um, see you in a second. Um, oh. So, uh, my name is Sherilyn. Uh, so, I think a some of the people here uh, have known me uh, for a long time. Uh, so I'm one of the uh, core contributors at Aladinda. Uh, so I got into DeFi, uh, crypto and DeFi uh, over three years ago. Uh, and before that, I came from a traditional finance background. 
So how to change the way how finance works and the asset management works is something myself and the other Aladdin core contributors have been thinking over many years. So, um, and I want to use this opportunity to thank all the initial backers of Aladdin DAO, um, including Alex Peck, uh, Polychain, 1KX, uh, Digital Currency Group, uh, Alameda Research, CMS Holdings, uh, DeFi Alliance, uh, Multicoin Capital, Hart, uh, Kane, and many others. Uh, without your support, we cannot make where we are today. Uh, so I'm, I'm so excited and honored that we have uh, a lot more new friends joining us on this journey now. So um, welcome uh, all the full candidates to join us today. Uh, as DeFi that uh, mentioned, so who represents uh, the democratized um, governance mechanism in ancient Greek uh, parliament. So at Aladdin Dell, uh, Bull represents the collective brain of our system. So Aladdin Dell is built as a yield farming curation service governed by a DAO. Uh, it is a three-sided uh, marketplace with the structure where DeFi projects can come to Aladdin Dell to source liquidity. Uh, the platform provides one-stop shopping liquidity mining services to all DeFi users. And Aladdin Dell Bull as the collective brain of the system, we curate, research, and govern the asset selection process. So we all know how chaotic crypto and DeFi space is and how fast things move. So we want to build this decentralized network of talent where collectively we can better structure information and the separate signals from noises, uh, help quality projects get more resources support, and more importantly, optimize asset allocations for DeFi world overall. So if less people get rug pulled because what we do at Aladdin Dell, I think that will make all the efforts worthwhile. Um, and um, so Dell have been a, a hot topic since the inception of Ethereum. And the idea of decentralized uh, autonomous organization uh, working tirelessly in managing your asset is uh, very attractive. So what is unique about Aladdin Dell so I want to summarize it into um, four points and explain them briefly. Uh, they are lonely, uh, decentralized decision-making, uh, scale scalability, and game by. So along only, uh, we are a group of long-term thinkers. Uh, and so when it comes to liquidity mining, we fundamentally think farming assets with most growth potentials is much better strategy than farming down. So Aladdin Dow's mechanism design is to incentivize all members to select quality assets with most promising potentials on a sustainable basis. So if you see us as a fund, so our strategy is lonely. Um, decentralized decision-making, um, I think that explains for itself. So we all know the efficiency of uh, centralized decision-making. However, uh, the downside is uh, obvious as well. So DAO is re-architecting the human organizational structure as we swarm into this new global system. Um, given, the, given the multidisciplinary nature of crypto investment, uh, everything runs at global scale and the impact from this you know, wave of digital cultural renaissance, uh, there's huge benefit to bring people with different expertise and perspectives together so collectively, we can see all the opportunities in the market, have the capabilities to assess all the opportunities from all possible angles and help projects to build a truly global community. Um, and the scalability. So most of the investment does today, um, as the st structures, uh, they are structured as permissioned uh, and uh, the GP's voting power equal to LP shares. So this is wonderful for professional groups to invest collectively. However, it's hard to scale while staying as an effective market at the same time. So the nature of asset management market is people with know-how to service people who don't. Uh, and Aladdin Dow takes on a different vision uh, where we not only want to invest for ourselves, but also we want to help to optimize asset allocations uh, for DeFi world in general. And Aladdin Dao's uh, design philosophy is similar to Bitcoin. 
So as the network becomes more valuable uh, and uh, the brain power, it is the hash power in Bitcoin's case, uh, should continue to increase as well. So the number of board members will increase as the platform TVL increases, as we need more brain power to manage more capital. And more importantly, there's no politics. And you can come to work with your avatar and uh, your on-chain address showing your track record. Um, and uh, finally, GameFi. Uh, so at Aladdin DAO, we aim to GameFi the DAO, where anyone can join, play to earn, vote to earn. Uh, the game is designed to align all rewards towards incentivizing the maximum yield of the DAO. With each process of talent management, asset selection, performance tracking, and the reward distribution all baked into the game itself. So algorithms are quantifiable manifestation of the DAO game with each equation crafted to economically align the interest of the player to the benefit of the DAO as a whole. Um, and overall, uh, so investment will be DAO is an unstoppable trend. And Aladdin DAO uh, is very honored to be part of this great experiment. And we're super excited uh, to have so many brilliant people joining us uh, and um, collectively uh, will make the most powerful investment engine in crypto and DeFi. So let the game begin. Um, so sorry if I take too much time and, uh, and I'll hand it back to you, if I did. No, 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 that was great. Uh, so uh, yeah, just to quickly summarize, there, there's really two different key players in Aladdin DAO that we're talking about. The one we're focused on today um, are those that are identifying the best yield farms. And um, just to reiterate that incentive behind it is that uh, if, if you identify, you know, better yields that last longer, because we all know there's lots of fleeting opportunities um, that, you know, will dry up very quickly. But the longer lasting those are, obviously, the more profits earned by Aladdin Dow yield farmers. And then ultimately, uh, you earn uh, like a performance fee um, from that. So, you know, that that's really the incentive um, behind uh, bull members. And then, of course, the, the other folks that participate in the community are, are hopefully there to uh, to learn and to identify um, the best farms. So what we're going to do um, for the for the remainder of this call is uh, just let um, each one of the the candidates uh, talk a bit about themselves. Um, we want the community to get to know you a bit more before uh, the election, so you know everyone can vote on who they think are the best candidates. Um, I would just uh, uh, recommend maybe talk a bit about, of course, who you are, you know, projects you've worked on. Um, the, the list of, of candidates here, by the way, is, is very impressive. Um, I'm personally very excited just to kind of learn from uh, all of the candidates here. But um, yeah, talking a bit about who you are, maybe uh, your biggest contribution or achievement over the years in DeFi, crypto in, in general, um, and then maybe why you would excel as an Aladdin Dow Bull member. So uh, yeah, we can get started then. And I just want to make sure, stop me if for any reason, if uh, we don't have the, the right people showing on screen, but we're going to start with uh, Lucas. Actually, oh, there we go. We've got the list right in front of us. So um, we'll start with uh, Lucas from Foundry. Um, Lucas, if you want to unmute yourself and, um, oh, uh, the goal here is three to five minutes. So uh, do your best to uh, be less long-winded than I am, so. Awesome, thank you. And uh, thanks, Lucas. happy to be here today. Uh, cool, so I'm Lucas. Uh, I work at Foundry, which is a DCG subsidiary. Um, and we're focused on mining and staking. Uh, so like right now we have um, kind of like a top five like Bitcoin mining pool, um, but I, I work a lot more on the staking side. Uh, so I've been leading up a lot of those efforts on setting up nodes for like Solana and, and Near, Flow, uh, and then kind of operating um, on top of those. Um, but outside of like my day job, I'm, I'm very involved with uh, DeFi, uh, researching new projects, uh, trying them out. And I have been for the past like two to three years or so. Um, I'm also pretty uh, active like on, on Discord communities, obviously. Right now, I'm, I'm very active um, with Ribbon Finance. 
uh, in, 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 the, in that community. And uh, I'm also kind of like exploring um, additional uh, things that you can kind of build out, right? So like I'm looking right now at building option payoffs on Uniswap V3, uh, kind of writing some, some posts and ideas on it and, and as well as like building some contracts uh, in front ends for that as well. Um, probably my biggest DeFi accomplishment, uh, it, it's honestly probably owning a, a ribbon finance hat. Uh, there's like 64 of us or so. Um, and it's kind of cool to just be in that, that community. Um, but the other one, uh, and it just kind of shows for like, you know, how, how long been, been in DeFi is, uh, being part of the original Psy pool on pool together. Uh, so that was, that was pretty cool as well. Um, why I'd, why I'd be a good, a good, a good, uh, pool member would probably be like, I'm already researching, um, a lot of these projects. I, I'm very up to date on all of them and I kind of have skin in the game across all of them. Uh, and I pretty much just constantly share what I'm, what I'm thinking and, and what I'm involved in just across various Discord communities. Uh, it's not very like organized or in a specific spot. Um, so I can definitely just bring that into uh, the, the pool members here. Um, and then like finally, I think just cause kind of interesting, especially with how uh, the Aladdin airdrop went uh, going to like four style holders and such. Um, I was involved in that and, and happily claimed my drop from that. Um, but probably the biggest like wrecked experience was, even though it wasn't necessarily even a rug pull, was participating in the Phi Genesis. Because <laughs> um, like the beginning of that was all kind of a train wreck. And even though the, the price kind of stabilized back around a dollar now, uh, I, I'm pretty sure like everyone that, that was uh, involved in Genesis is still kind of down a pretty good amount. Um, but yeah, that, that's a quick intro on me and uh, my involvement in DeFi. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Hey, that was perfect. Uh, JX, would you like to go next? JX from Binance Labs? Sure, sure. Yeah. Hello, guys. Actually, yeah, I, I'm just uh, like quit Binance Labs last month. So um, now just to give a like bit, a little bit of background introduction of myself and, and how uh, what I've been doing and why I'm like interested in joining the pool member of DAO. So actually, um, uh, uh, I joined crypto uh, since 2018. And before that, I was uh, working in a traditional finance PE and a conglomerate doing MA. Um, so basically still doing investing. Um, after joining uh, after joined, uh, crypto, I, I worked in Finbush since 2018 uh, and from 2018 to early 2020. Um, I invested a lot of uh, like VC deals uh, back then. It, uh, uh, from now we see we can see some of the projects have been growing really well, uh, such as Depot Labs, Falcon X, and uh, a bunch of other uh, other deals. So which are uh, growing very quickly. And, and when when we invested, they are pretty small. Like Falcon X, there are only three people, and, and right now they get like a, a ten billion valuation with a with the biggest like a, a fidelity investor invested. In. So it's great. To, um, I uh, feel honored to see the growth of the crypto industry and, and make me feel confident to uh, be a pioneer and, and, and continue to work in the industry. Um, I joined Binance like in 2020 early uh, in Binance Labs and led Binance Launchpad and Launchpool, as well as the uh, investment of Binance Labs. Um, during Binance, uh, the, the, experience, the, the experience in Binance, I led the investment in several projects like uh, X Infinity, which is like 1,000 times the return from today's price, as also um, as well as uh, Alpha Finance, and uh, also Injective uh, Injective Protocol, um, and a bunch of like uh, other ecosystem like Polkadot ecosystem, Moonbeam, um, the some of the uh, top projects in BSC uh, like Pancake and Bakery. Um, so uh, what we I have done in in Binance is mostly like uh, aligned with the strategic uh, fo uh, focus on on. On, on with the with the women with the main exchange business of finance and and also um personally I am a, a huge DeFi fan and and and, and updating a lot of like like DeFi, DeFi projects in very early stage um also um so recently I quit finance because I want to have more flexibility and want to become a, like a, uh do some research by myself um I published the report research report on X Infinity discussing the economic model. I think maybe some of some of you guys have already checked it out, and and we'll I think we'll uh would like to collaborate with uh, with all of you guys to um future uh, research or 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 different like uh, um like 
uh, innovations and, and discussing different protocols and governance here. So I think um, a lot of things will we, I can share later, but I will save time for 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 the people behind. So I just uh, stop here and maybe yeah we can chat later. Thanks. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Thomas Rush. Hey, everybody. Um, excuse me. Uh, so I've uh, got a few different roles here in the DeFi space. Um, you know, kind of primarily or most high profile, I'm a, a partner at Mesh, which is Consensus Mesh, the investment arm of, of Consensus, of course. So uh, they're, you know, leading the charge on managing our, our digital asset portfolio, which is, is fairly substantial. And then also uh, working with a number of portfolio companies we have. Um, our portfolio is 130 and I work with around 20 uh, quite directly, uh, a few of those being um, exchanges and different different DeFi companies. Um, then beyond that and kind of, you know, kind of the gray area of personal involvement slash professional involvement, um, I'm also a representative member of Neptune DAO, which is kind of interesting, particularly compared to Aladdin DAO because it's similar in that there's, um, you know, 99 members directing liquidity uh, towards yield farming, but it's all very kind of, it's it's one axis on which it's very different from Aladdin DAO is it's very private. So they're directing their own liquidity for their own benefit versus exposing that outward. And um, so I'm really, that's, you know, a lot of the reason I was excited about Aladdin DAO period is uh, just the democratization of that, that intel. Um, also worked on on several token design projects, working uh, consult or advising on a few right now. Um, beginning to get more involved with Idle Finance, uh, and we'll be yeah getting more engaged there. And then um, I'm also a venture partner at a very DeFi focused um, emerging fund that just hasn't been announced yet. So I'll, I'll save the name for later. But um, but also doing that. And I think the the overall reason I'm you know kind of most excited on Aladdin DAO is really what I what, what I touched on before. It's been you know I think interesting to see the uh, across crypto and DeFi um, you know the space overall espouses certain philosophies, particularly around you know decentralizing value um, across of course the across Web three. But I think so far it's been heavily favored to individuals and firms that have existing access to capital and technology. So it's almost exacerbated some of the, the kind of issues we've seen from you know the economy of yesteryear. And so um, I think with the mission of Aladdin now of kind of exposing some of those insights and providing access to that market intel to other users, um, it's just really you know kind of frankly noble in the fact that um, there's a DAO being built around it. Uh, I think we'll just benefit everybody. So really excited for kind of the long-term impact that the, the project will bring to bear. And I'll, uh, I'll pause there and, and hand it back to DeFi Dad. Hey, thanks, Thomas. That was great. Uh, next up is Brian Lee from Alameda. Hey, guys. Uh, yep, this is Brian. Um, I joined crypto in 2017 uh, and then started my own coin shop uh, crypto investment firm. And two years ago, I, I joined Alameda and been head I've been heading their uh, investment arm. Uh, so at Alamedia, we we pretty much look at everything. We, we at the start we only look at DeFi because uh, you know one of we're, we're one of the bigger DeFi users ourselves. But uh, right now we're at a size you know we, we look at like pretty much everything as well as uh, you know equities that anything that's interesting is FTX as well. Um, we do work very closely with Solana, so you know myself and we have a team you know been been helping a lot of the Solana project coming out from Hackathon, helping them with like their project design, going to mark, go to markets, testing their products, um, and, and sort of like bootstrapping their liquidity. Um, so, uh, but that being said, we're, we're, we're not just, uh, you know, fully committed into Solana. We also look at like other uh, ecosystem as well, like Polkadot, Cosmos, and, and Ethereum, of course. Um, I guess our biggest achievement is, you know, we, we work with Solana at a very, very early stage and we sort of like bootstrap the whole ecosystem. We put a lot of resources and capital there. And, you know, we're, we're saying, we have a lot of, we have quite a big picture in, you know, what's happening in Solana. And there's a lot of, you know, very, very interesting DeFi projects uh, native to Solana that's coming out. So I think like, you know, it would be very, very interesting to, you know, share, share with you guys like some of the farming opportunity there. Um, and you know the you know as I as I mentioned like we, we work closely with Solana so um, you know love to love to contribute like the farming opportunities there, and I guess the biggest wreck experience you know we we I guess personally like and, and on, on, on the media side we get we got wrecked on like safe uh, not sure if you guys remember like the it's now called Cover 
that was like back in the first DeFi uh, summer. Um, and, and that's that's our first bank experience. And and I guess uh, we, we, are, we farming is our, one of our core strategies. So we are, we're actually farming in a lot of like very, very high risk, uh, you know, high rock pool risk uh, 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 farms and like uh, Hobby, Hobby, uh, Hobby chain, like KuCoin chain. So there's actually a lot, you know, a lot of, a lot of happening. So, uh, so yeah, cool. Really, really excited to, to, to meet you guys. Hey, thanks so much, Brian. Uh, Nick Pai is next. Oh, and Nick, correct me if I mispronounce your name, and, and that goes for everyone else. I, I've uh, prepared to try to pronounce everyone's names correctly, but um, yeah, please, please uh, let us know how you're supposed to pronounce it. Oh, let me just double check if Nick is here right now. Is uh, Nick here from, uh, from UMA? Maybe not. Let me just double check here. I, I saw him on. Uh, yeah, you know what? We can just weave him back in here. Uh, maybe he had to drop off for a moment or the connection fell out. So uh, let's see here then. Uh, next up after Nick would be uh, Daniel Barr from DeepDAO. Hi, guys. Um, thanks for organizing and, and this fantastic event. Thanks, if I dad and Charlene. I think that it's um, the, the mission of Aladdin DAO is really, really touching on, on kind of the core values of crypto, which I am personally very uh, excited about. It's bringing, democratizing the um, like wealth processes, wealth creation. And, and I think that it's really awesome. Um, a bit of background about myself. So I used to be a researcher in uh, semiconductor industry and uh, quantum computing and um, crypto was my hobby until it started taking too much of my time. And then um, I successfully dropped out of my uh, PhD to kind of focus on um, open source community building and all these kind of things um, over in Sydney originally and with a lot of collaboration with the Chinese ecosystem. And over the past um, three-ish years or so, we've been um, working on venture building with several different startups. Uh, it originally started from Australia, but right now we're involved in, um, in kind of all over the world. The Deep DAO, which is listed as my, my current uh, affiliation here, it's a project that I've been involved with in the past year. I've also been a core contributor to DHedge, which I think in many, in many ways is very aligned to the same vision, which is democratizing um, access to really lucrative uh, investment opportunities that otherwise would be very difficult to get. So I think that um, I really, really like the uh, mission that we have here with uh, Aladdin Dow, and I hope that I'll be able to contribute. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, strategies that I'm now looking at, um, like yielding ETH or naturally there was the stable coin yields that were really hot in this past year with the DeFi boom. Um, maybe an a interesting uh, wrecked story is that I still have uh, a punk that I don't know where is my key for because back then uh, when I uh, got that punk I, I didn't quite imagine that punks would be you know, the price that they are today. And I, and I might have just uh, experimented with a wallet and didn't really keep all the right things in place. And several other uh, interesting wrecked experiences. Um, always, uh, you know, always learn to manage keys better. And yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to contribute to the mission of Aladdin Dao. And back to you, DeFi Dad. Thanks, Daniel. That was great. Uh... Next up, we've got Adam Patel from DeFi Alliance. Um, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, super excited to be here um, and really kind of love the, the, the mission and vision of Aladdin DAO. Um, so I'll start with a quick personal background. Um, kind of got into crypto in 2014-15. Um, started by building Bitcoin mining rigs out of my garage with my dad. Um, kept doubling down on crypto over the years. And then um, come college, 
launched the blockchain club on campus, which I, you know, kind of really started diving in deeper, kind of scaled that to about 100, 150 members and connected it to a bunch of other clubs nationwide. Um, and then through that, met a bunch of folks in the Midwest, um, you know, based out of Chicago. So I met a bunch of folks in the Midwest, launched a small scale, you know, kind of consultancy in the, in the crypto blockchain space, which ended up getting acquired. And then through all that kind of, you know, started breaking in and, and interned at various funds throughout the space, you know, namely at Vol Capital with Suna for about a year and a half. Um, really learned how to kind of do deep dive research and analyst work for, you know, a crypto first fund. Um, and then kind of last August, um, I was a, a little jealous that I missed out on the Uniswap airdrop. Um, so, you know, started like quadrupling down on DeFi over, over the next few months. Um, found myself at a crypto hedge fund early in, in you know, late December, early January. Um, you know, was running the DeFi strategy strategy a few weeks in until got pinged by Imran to join um, the DeFi Alliance in March. So quick background on DeFi Alliance and kind of what we do there. Uh, you can kind of think of us as the leading uh, accelerator um, in DeFi. We have, um, we kind of have this Y Combinator approach where we have a fund that we raise kind of, you know, by a lot of the DeFi natives, Mark Cuban, a lot of the traditional finance institutions. Um, and then we also have our, and it kind of funnels into our accelerator program which is um, a quarterly program, six week sprints, where we kind of help some of the best startups in the space. You know, we've helped like Synthetix, Kyber Network, ZeroX, DYDX, SushiSwap, et cetera. Um, and so part of, you know, why I think that I would make a good candidate um, as the bull um, is, you know, primarily just kind of the long, the long history in crypto. And then, you know, kind of working with a lot of teams, you know, through the DeFi lines from the get-go. Um, DeFi Alliance is also kind of a multi-chain uh, accelerator, you know, with ecosystem support for Solana, Polkadot, uh, Celo, Terra, et cetera. And so being able to kind of work with some of the best founders early from, from day one, um, you know, kind of helps you kind of see exactly what the scene looks like on various chains, um, you know, help identify opportunities, kind of see where the space is going and, and see where the puck is going to be heading. Um, and so I think that all that is kind of a great, um, you know, kind of attribute to have with regards to providing you know, value to, to the community that would need it. Um, and so and, and direct experience is actually pretty similar to um, the previous gentleman who spoke. I do also have a punk that's lost in a wallet somewhere that I can't find, um, which is unfortunate, but I, I've come to terms with it. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's kind of a quick background. Um, and, you know, kind of looking forward to hearing more about the rest of you guys and seeing where things go. Thanks, Adam. Uh, we're going to uh, bring up now Nick Pai from uh, UMA. Nick, can you hear us? Uh, yes. Sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yep. You're good, dude. Go right ahead. Cool. Sorry about that. I, I joined the Discord, didn't realize there was a Zoom. Uh, cool. So I'm... No worries. I'm <laughs> I'm an UMA core dev and I work primarily on the smart contracts there. So we build mechanisms to secure synthetic and derivative contracts. More recently, I've been working on our cross-chain infrastructure for side chains like Polygon. And um, my current project is building uh, a soon to be announced project on optimism. Um, before UMA, I, had a, I studied CS in college and I traded corporate bonds at Barclays. I was um, writing code to arbitrage investment grade corporate bond ETFs. And I wanted to combine those two skills and really fell deep into the crypto rabbit hole and really uh, aligned with what Hart's vision was there and met some great coworkers like Chris. And yeah, we, we tried to design financial contracts and for individuals and especially DAOs to put on interesting risk exposure. Um, my biggest DeFi accomplishment is I built an ETH2 staking rig from scratch, and I'm really happy that I'm maintaining that while keeping up with a lot of the travels. And my biggest wreck moment was Yam Pool 2. Awesome. Hey, Nick, I, I, I think you just, you either got cut off or, or you were done there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was it. My last thing was That's Yam. Yeah, awesome. No, thank you so much. Uh, so next up will be uh, Xerox Minion. Hi, everyone. Thanks, um, sexy, my dad. Uh, so so I'll just do pseudonymous, really. Um, so I'm on Twitter as Xerox Minion as well. Um, so a little bit of background about myself. Um, and I mean, Crypto Things 2017 uh, was based in Australia. Uh, uh, my, my sort of background was in comp science and also finance. Uh, so pretty much got a bit, a bit of a bit of a boast. Um, so I got into crypto in 2017, uh, was, was basically, uh, uh self-discovering, um, 
uh, crypto and, and doing a bit of a, like, I guess, like uh, mining stuff back in the days. Um, and um, and uh, later on down the track, I moved, uh, relocated to China. I joined, um, joined a crypto research firm based in Beijing, uh, pretty much doing uh, industry research for them and also uh, coming up with, like, I guess, like DeFi rating model, design, uh, valuation, all, all sorts of stuff. And then later on, I tried to join Huobi as the head of research over there, looking over, uh, I guess, project research, industry research, uh, and, uh, and also a lot of stuff as well. So now I'm, I'm with GBV based in Hong Kong. Uh, so pretty much, again, leading the research uh, uh, initiative and also um, finding alpha, um, leveraging, say, for example, uh, on-chain analytics, uh, Glassnode, Nansen, or all, all sorts of things that you can um, think of uh, looking around on-chain data, looking around um, data analysis, um, um, et cetera. So, so back in, like, I guess, like DeFi summer days, I was uh, one of the early uh, Wi-Fi, like day one farmer for Wi-Fi, uh, Yum, uh, Compound, whatever, Sushi, whatever, uh, you name it, like whatever uh, project that is um, um, launched during DeFi summer. Um, so I guess um, I guess my biggest achievement um, so far uh, is uh, my DGEN score is around uh, 815. So pretty much ranked uh, top uh, 100, nearly 100 globally uh, with 30K address last time checked about two months ago. So I think they're adding um, NFT stuff and also multi-wallet as well very soon. So looking forward to check uh, again with my DGEN score. Um, so I guess the biggest wreck experience so far, um, I guess I'll go stable coin in a way. So I play around with um, ESD, DSD, OHM, basis cash, uh, like pretty much all the uh, I'll go stable coin out there. Uh, so I got wrecked uh, 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 on, on a lot of um, I'll go stable coin as well. Um, so the other wrecked experience will be like pull to farming, um, pretty much like uh, I go pull to farming straight. Uh, pretty much no pull one or pull zero, uh, just 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 buy and then and then and then straight to pull to farming and they're trying to capture the sort of alpha out there as well. Uh, I guess and then also looking over uh, my Twitter around finding these alpha, uh, participate in terms of the uh, um, community discussion. Uh, I'm on, I guess like 200 groups on Discord though. I don't really check like each individually every day, but like um, some from time to time I would I would also clear up the message as well. Um, so that's that's me. Um, and um, I guess that's it for me, really getting uh, reverting back to Divadet. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, next up, we have uh, a representative from CMS. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Joe from CMS. Uh, over here, I help to head up our research side of things um, and manage our investment portfolio. Um, I've gotten into space. It was back in 2011. Um, so I'd started out with a lot of independent infrastructure projects running Bitcoin nodes. Um, and I had a pretty large scale mining farm for the time doing uh, profit switching on script based coins. So things like Litecoin, Vertcoin, Feathercoin, things that don't even exist anymore. Um, so I've had a pretty longstanding stint in the space to kind of watch this stuff develop. I'd spent a little bit of time as an early employee over at Falcon X, which functions as digital assets brokerage. And over there, I had headed up the OTC desk um, and kind of tying that into CMS here, we operate our fund kind of on a hybrid model. So we employ a bunch of actively traded strategies, and then we look to kind of tie that into our venture and investing book. Um, on the actively traded side of things, we're pretty active across the entirety of DeFi, whether it be staking, liquidity provision, lending, borrowing. Um, and we do do quite a bit of programmatic trading trading across the derivatives platforms at this point as well. Um, I think for us, kind of our largest benefit here is kind of getting hands on with a lot of these platforms. Um, so I guess a good example here is Perpetual Protocol, who we are early investors in. Um, we use the platform pretty heavily and we try to hang out in the Discord to kind of give feedback to the community on how they can get more involved with using the platform, um, as well as kind of digging into the code base itself and giving feedback to the team, um, how they can improve or maybe things that make it a little bit easier on the user experience, just to interact with the platform overall. Um, so I think for us, our largest benefit is kind of getting in the weeds with this stuff and being able to offer feedback to the community on how they can kind of do the same. Um, I think 
for me, the biggest DeFi achievement, uh, kind of similar to Zero X Minion, my DGen score is in the top 100. I'd been one of the first day YFI farmers. Um, we were all kind of aping into the curve um, pools as soon as they opened up on the contract um, without the UI, things like that. Um, so kind of watch this stuff blossom from the beginning. And I think we've got a pretty good wealth of experience across the board here at CMS to kind of provide feedback to the community on that front. Uh, so I'll hand it back to DeFi Dad here. Thanks, Joe. That was great. Uh, also, if anyone's just tuning in, a uh, reminder, as, as we're running through these, these bull candidates, um, as we're sharing wrecked experiences and DGEN scores, which I think like lightens the mood, uh, uh, just a, a reminder for folks that are new to Aladdin DAO, uh, our goal is not to necessarily identify those um, those opportunities that I think qualify for you know the higher DGEN scores. Like the goal of Aladdin DAO is we are actually looking for like longer lasting, um, I wanna say like lower risk yield farms. Um, so um, I, I guess I mean to say, don't be scared off by like, we're, we're, uh, we're all not looking to curate the farms that you know are gonna be 10,000%, but potentially end up in uh, someone losing their money. The goal is, is, is quite the opposite. But that being said, I think the DGEN scores uh, and um, all the stories here actually uh, represent just um, how much this group experiments and just how curious we are to try everything in DeFi. So um, next up is uh, Guayu. And uh, let me know if I mispronounced your name. Here, here's where it gets interesting as I try to pronounce uh, names in Chinese. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey guys. Okay, thanks hey, for having me. Uh, my name's Guo Yu. Kind of, uh, it's great, Divada. Uh, I'm the founder of SACB Labs, uh, which is a research team on smart contract security and uh, all other interesting things about blockchain technology. Uh, before entering the lovely uh, blockchain community, I was working in a university uh, specializing in uh, programming language theories, uh, operating system kernel, uh, tap system, formal verification, formal verification, something like that. Um, and our team did a research about, um, we started the smart contract security research um, in uh, 2018. Uh, including a symbolic execution. And we did a lot of work on SMT checking in Solidity compiler. Uh, we did a uh, formal proof about a uh, smart contract using uh, COC uh, with rigorous uh, mathematical foundations. Um, so we, we did an, an, um, analyze the formal 3D attacking and uh, something, uh, many, many things. And from 20. Uh, 19, we turned to uh, zero knowledge proofs, uh, which at that time we believe that uh, zero knowledge proofs will empower Ethereum dramatically. Uh, right now, we are building a protocol with zero knowledge proofs to uh, to build a free data market to solve the problem that the state implosion of uh, of uh, Ethereum nodes. Uh, so, uh, which is the biggest achievement in DeFi? So, we have a uh, um, outdated more than 100 uh, DeFi projects in uh, past three years. Uh, also, we have rich experiences on their knowledge proofs so as to help a couple of teams to prove their uh, protocols. Uh, for instance, we helped the Loopring team uh, improve their uh, ZQLab design implementation back in uh, 2019 and uh, outdated their smart contracts and the circuits of their knowledge proofs. Uh, uh, so, uh, any React experiences? Um, okay. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, the probability of not React of DeFi is virtually small. We shall feel lucky that many, many DeFi's now haven't been React so far. Um, why is that? So, um, it's my idea that the architecture of Ethereum is going to be more and more complicated. The vulnerabilities of smart contracts are easy to identify, identify, but big eyes under the water. A wallet, browser, a web front end, smart contracts, and layer one consensus. All of these things uh, form the biggest machine 
we human have ever built. Okay, 20 years ago, uh, someone told me um, that a laptop is the most complicated machine the human ever built. If we treat every single instruction as a part. So, but now we can see that Ethereum is much more complicated than a laptop because all smart contracts are linked with each other. So the whole state is enormous. Um, okay, yesterday we occasionally found it a, a creepy uh, Ethereum address. Uh, so attacker behind the address actually had hacked into many victims accounts, sold their NFTs and transfer their ethers to this address without any permission. So actually one of my friends is the you know, victim. Uh, we follow the address, follow all the transactions, but we found nothing right now. So we don't know, uh, you know where does the problem come from? Uh, probably it's a MetaMask, the browser, or the private key, we don't know. So the creepy thing is that the, all the victims they have the same experiences of browsing on OpenSea. So today we can see still more and more victims there. So we can see the balance of the users still increasing. That means the number of victims are increasing. So a simple conclusion, we shall be very, very careful and keep the security in mind all the way. Okay, thank you guys. I think I can contribute to the community with my research experiences of computer technology. Okay, thank you guys. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, next up is Martin Krung. Hi. Hi, I'm Martin. Yeah, I prepared a few slides. I, I showed them because yeah, I prepared them. And I always do it because uh, and yeah, I have this girl pic on Twitter and people don't know my face. So this is my face. The girl pic is like, it was just a test. Uh, it was fun and I won't have the intention to change it, but I didn't have time. First I have to do uh, my taxes and you know, tax is a pain for most people owning crypto as for me. So who I am? Yeah, I, I, I'm coined the, the term vampire attack because it's like a coincidence and a, a sushi attacked a Uniswap one day before I wrote a, a theoretical background about this, that the imbalance of, um, of uh, mispricing of long-term um, liquidity and short-term liquidity in crypto. So this is, I got a big boost on Twitter followers. So many people know me from this. So my background actually is, uh, yeah, backwards. Um, I have like a certificate study in blockchain because, you know, I live in Switzerland and Switzerland people love paper. I left my own company one year ago. I had a web dev company. I'm a certified scrum master. I, I have a advanced studies in innovation engineering. I had for 15 years my own company, web company, which I left because I was bored. I worked as a dev and project manager. I'm a Linux guy since 20 years. Yeah, that's also I learned code. I'm studying media at the beginning. Me and crypto, it's my 10th years in crypto. I discovered Bitcoin 2011. I did like everything you can do, mostly as a hobbyist. I did CPR mine, BTC. I've been in the, I took part in the public sale of Ethereum. It was like maybe coincident, maybe not. Um, yeah, I invested into the DAO. I did like the whole ICO flipping, coin trading in 2017. I didn't sell. And then I got into DeFi. Or I used every new protocol on Ethereum coming out. I used most of them just to try them out the whole time since Ethereum exists. And then I also used DeFi very early on, mostly because I had like most of my wealth on chain and I used protocol. So my digging score is is 675, I've been in top 100, I dropped out now. Yeah, the last half year, I was a full-time contributor for the DeekStar, where I was a product man manager and I built um, an IDEO platform. And um, yeah, my biggest achievement is DeFi crypto. Of course, it's my being in the public Ethereum sale 2014. I think it's 
coincidence sometime. Uh, yeah, publishing the vampire attack was this was like a big boost, and most people know me from them. Uh, because I had like the need to to manage my money on chain. So I was a very early people for curve, different units for pools and for one inch, which I got a lot of airdrops. I got other small airdrops. I did other plays like Ampleforth, uh, Kalupo is not known. It's like a, a polka dot, uh, yeah, proof of work. Jane, it's more a fun project. I own the sock, not anymore. I've been in Runo, one of the, I've been ICO Juno. My area of interest is DeFi in general. I'm very interested in innovation, basically, that's my main driver. I'm interested in AM. Uh, in algorithmic stable coins and also in liquidity. And now, because I did work for the DXDAO, uh, I'm also into ideal platforms, how, how people sell token for different projects. So how I can help as a pool member? Yeah, I'm open for new stuff because I left DXDAO in July. We, have like a we had a disagreement about the strategy. I have a proven track report of being at the right place at the right time, several times. And I have a diverse background. I worked as a project manager and web page for a decade. I, I, I'm, I'm a coder too. I have a lot of my wealth on chain. I have around 3,000 transactions, mostly for your mainnet, but I'm not a maxi. For me, it's more grayscale. Um, yeah, I researched hundreds of projects for the last 10 years. Um, I'm experienced in working with DAO because I work in Geeks DAO. I'm in for the innovation mainly, and I have a long term thinking. Yeah, that's who I am. Trading, yeah, biggest track, trading, you know, getting liquidated. Um, I've been one hack only. This was very lately. It was the only hack I lost really money. A rug pulled, never. The most stupid, stupid play it has been. Has been investing and said dollar after it starts failing. I didn't know. Yeah, that's how it works. So that's about me. Hey, thanks so much, Martin. That's great. Uh, and then I'll just uh, once there we go. Once you stop sharing your screen, I'll um, I'll introduce who's next here. I'm struggling because I don't use Zoom. Oh, uh, if you if you scroll to the bottom of your screen or the top, it, it should reveal a um, an ability to uh, stop sharing. It's like a hidden button. Very sorry. Oh, it's okay. Maybe I just leave. Really that fun. yeah there there should be like a green bar you should see like a green bar either up top or at the bottom uh, there we uh, go yeah. ah there we go we're all good um okay I i'm gonna allow uh, our, our next candidate to pronounce their name so i don't butcher it um so yeah uh please go right ahead okay hey, hello everyone uh this is john john here uh so uh first i started with uh my experience with crypto coin started uh, 20, uh, 2012. So uh, back then, I was a uh, engineer in the I think the first in the in the first uh, ASIC Bitcoin miner uh, companies uh, ASIC miner. So uh, I started working there as an engineer, and uh, I worked there by uh, I developed Bitcoin mining pools, uh, Bitcoin mining firmware miner firmwares, and manager. And I also manage a couple of Bitcoin mining firms there. Uh, then I joined Bitman. Uh, I was in Bitman. I was a manager of the largest Bitcoin mining pool uh, for the last three years. Uh, and for the Ethereum side, uh, we uh, in Bitman, I also developed uh, uh, Ethereum der derivative DEX back in 20, uh, 2017. <laughs> but that was, I think that's still quite early for uh, DeFi markets. So that project didn't uh, go well. Uh, and I also lead a de development of uh, Ethereum Blockchain Explorer. So this is my experience back in Bitman. 
Uh, starting this year, I was uh, I have a small team. We have dedicated research in DeFi projects. Uh, so so far, we have uh, built a couple of uh, uh, arbitraging boards and also like also IDO snagging boards. Uh, we we are also uh, developing uh, MEV boards. So trying to using these boards to do arbitrage on chain. Um, so why uh, um, for for the Aladdin DAO board member? Um, I think the advantage of, of our team is that we have a, a low history in crypto and every team member is, is tech and code savvy. Uh, I, I think total experience with DeFi, uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and crypto uh, stuff, I think combined experience in our team is more than 30 years. And for the, uh, for the topic about, about React, um, I think, uh, as, as, as just said, it's I think uh, you, you cannot say because you can 100% uh, avoid any wreck, but uh, before any project, you should be, you should doing your own research. So for our team, uh, we definitely look if there's only on-chain code, uh, check the GitHub, uh, check, uh, check the past time of the team of team before. Um, and also, uh, if you want, if, if you want to try to avoid being wrecked, uh, it's, it's best to it's best to uh, to know how to react. So we also uh, reproduce almost every react after uh, all the incidents and trying to know what's happening. And uh, we also get uh, uh, try to accumulate the experience to develop uh, our own project. Try to avoid this all these mistakes. So especially for developing MEV bots. Um, I think everybody knows that there's currently a very many uh, uh, many uh, many guys trying to trick uh, MEV bots. So it's it's even more hard. It's even more difficult to uh, try not to be uh, wrecked in the in, in this dark forest. So I think it's uh, if you should be careful. You should also be lucky. Uh, for Aladdin DAO, I think uh, we think it's a, it's a it's a good new project uh, with a very uh, with a very uh, it, it do has some similar uh, with Yearn, but I think uh, uh, the new mechanism, the governance uh, for Aladdin Aladdin DAO is is also very interesting. So this is why I we are trying to be a candidate. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we've got Hassan Basiri from Arca. Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks, DeFi Dad, big fan of yours. Um, so hold on, let's be Can you guys hear me okay? You sound great. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Hassan. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm Hassan Basiri. I'm a portfolio manager here at Arca. Uh, for those that don't know us, you know, we, we have a few different funds. We have like the hedge fund, which in which I manage our uh, DeFi book and our derivatives book. Uh, and then we also have a yield fund, which I'm the, the PM on. Uh, and, the, you know, the goal of the yield fund is to generate uh, sustainable yields uh, with sustainable risk adjusted yields for LPs. So, you know, I'm not aping into pool twos unfortunately, <laughs> and I'm managing uh, that money as though it's someone else's money because it is. Um, in general at ARCA, we, you know, we're a deep dive fundamental research shop. Uh, like our biggest, some of our biggest wins to date have been, you know, being early Wi-Fi buyers uh, and farmers. Obviously anyone that's followed the news recently knows we have a very big position in sushi um, that, you know, we, we stand behind it. We still have well over $50 million worth of sushi. And like, uh, our goal is, you know, sustainable alpha generation through deep dive research. Personally, right now, I think in terms of my strategy and what I would bring, I think the best yields in the space right now are not on ETH. They're on Sol, Luna. Uh, there's some good stuff on BSC. You know, uh, Avalanche is going to have some good farms soon. Um, and, you know, like just being super involved within DeFi, I think you get to see where the, you get to skate where the puck's going. And that's generally my strategy. Um, and uh, biggest rug pull so far has been uh, probably DSD too, when, or DSD, when I thought I was going to get back to a dollar and I didn't sell and it, it kind of rugged on me right before I got to two. Um, but other than that, yeah, like 
total uh, in general, believe in finding good farms, staying in them. Uh, we do leverage yield farms sometimes if we think uh, we're bullish on the token. Uh, so that's as close as we get to a pool too. But yeah, that's it. Happy to be here. Um, happy to be part of part of this. Thanks, Hassan. Uh, next up, we'll have uh, Max Sean from Foundry. Hey guys, I'm, I'm Max. Uh, I guess the MEV guys got grouped pretty closely together. Um, I work at, at Foundry, which is obviously one of DCG's wholly owned subsidiaries. And as my colleague Lucas mentioned, um, we operate one of the top five Bitcoin mining pools. We also have a staking business. And in my area, we are the, the first you know, large institution that I know of that is operating in the MEV space. Um, I do MEV inside and, and outside of work. And that's sort of how I best interface with, with DeFi. Um, moving on to, to my biggest achievements, I find that a lot of them are community oriented. Uh, obviously, big member in the Flashbots Discord. I'm there all the time. Uh, I think that's one of the highest signal to noise ratio discords and, and communities in DeFi right now. And uh, so, so, that, so that's a big one for me. I'm also a, an original day one OMI 3-3 boys. Um, and if you want something more concrete, I think I was thereabouts as the first person thinking about providing just-in-time liquidity uh, in MAV. This is this idea of providing liquidity just before a trade uh, to, to capitalize on the transaction fees there and then moving out of that liquidity pool just after. Um, probably docked myself in Discord, but you can figure it out if you're, if you're sneaky. Um, most of my time I spend thinking about long tail MEV given the competitive nature of the space. And I think that gives me a, a fairly solid understanding of, of the DeFi world and, and some of the higher signal projects going on. And I think that'll allow me to contribute effectively as an Aladdin DAO member, pool member. Uh, so that, that, that's really where my angle lies here. In terms of wrecked experiences, I mostly compete in priority gas auctions. And uh, during the height of gas recently, I lost about, well, probably like a hundred in a row. So uh, that, was, that was pretty devastating for me. Uh, thanks guys. Hey, great to meet you, Max. Uh, next up, um, Sherilyn, did you wanna uh, introduce Discuss Fish? I'm not sure if, uh, uh, actually if, oh, there we go, um, you're, you're unmuted. Yeah, would you wanna introduce him? And, and just for this part, um, uh, Discuss Fish is gonna speak in Chinese. So um, some, some of us will just, uh, we'll get a quick TLDR at, at the end, um, but yeah. Yeah, so, so we have uh, Discuss Fish here, yeah. Uh, so Discuss Fish, uh, Yuzong, right? Uh, he is the CEO of F2 Pool. Uh, the second largest uh, uh, Bitcoin mining pool and the second largest uh, Ethereum mining pool as well. And the, he is a true DJ, uh, the best of the best in China. Uh, and everybody know him in China. And uh, so he is the mighty power to move every project uh, you know, uh, in the market. So um, he is going to present uh, in Chinese and uh, we'll have somebody to help him to, to do the translation. So you don't need to talk about it. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Shen Yu. I was about 10 years ago in the market. At the beginning, I was able to go to the market. I was able to go to the 呃，比特币的矿工和以太坊的矿工，所以我们早期创建了中国第一家比特币矿池，还不足过鱼池，也一度是全球最大的比特币矿池和以太坊矿池。在二零一七年的时候呢，我们看到了区块链领域的一些呃钱包使用的安全性问题和一些易用性问题，所以创立了 Cobo 啊、呃、这家公司，目前专注于呃解决区块链领域的底层的安全和一些技术问题。呃，目前也是全呃，也是亚洲市场比较大的、最大的呃，面向机构的加密数资产托管的服务商。那其实从去，其实从去年开始呢，呃，我个人就花了比较多的时间在关注 DeFi 领域。呃，尤其是从 Compound 开启了流动性挖矿以后呢，就一直深度的参与和呃众多的 DeFi 的项目，重点关注了。
啊 ，DeFi 底层的这种蓝筹的协议的一些发展，然后在国内的很多的平台上输出了一些项目的研究信息、挖矿的教程和一些呃 DeFi 领域的一些安全预警。然后也建立了一建立了一一些比较大的呃 DeFi 的核心社群，大概有几千名的用户。也在一些重大的安全事故发生之前，我们也发出了预警，及时的提醒了社区，并且呃参与了一些安全事故的后续的追踪和链上的一些数据分析。那么在 DeFi 领域呢，目前我们看来是充满了机遇，因为这个行业还是非常的早期，但是因为 DeFi 领域的早期阶段呢，链上存储了与用热钱包的形式存储了大量的资产，啊、呃，也充满了各种各样的风险。嗯、呃，投资 DeFi 呢，不仅是需要大家投入资金，更需要有啊、呃、非常多的知识和经验，和另外对一些呃底层协议安全性的一些认知。所以，判断一个 DeFi 的项目值不值得投资，需要啊、呃、不仅有产品。社区代币经济学、金融安全等一系列的知识，其实这是对一个个体来讲是非常庞大和复杂的任务。所以，随着目前 DeFi 领域的快速的发展，然后这种模块化的乐高积木式的跨协间调用越来越复杂，呃，这样的一个情况之下呢，个体就很难去完整的呃掌握一项技能，去充分的分析。呃，搞明白整个 DeFi 协议的底层，所以像这样的状况下呢，就需要依靠群体的智慧，来共同的挖掘 DeFi 领域的呃各种各样的风险和一些潜在发展的可能性。那阿拉丁道这样的一个平台呢，其实就就为整个大家围绕在 DeFi 平台之上的协作提供了一个非常好的平台，能够聚集。呃，群体性的智慧来达成共识，这也是我我们为什么非常看好阿拉丁道的一个原因啊！谢谢大家。Yeah, Peter, go ahead. All right, hi guys. This is Yu Ming Zerex. I lead the development efforts at Aladdin Bell, and、uh, I'll be helping discuss fish to translate his message in English.、Uh, I'm going to try to do this as accurately as I can as not a actual professional translator. So if I miss anything,、uh, Sharon, feel free to jump in. So Discuss Fish、uh, entered the crypto stage around ten years ago, starting with Bitcoin mining, and also later on into Ethereum mining.、Um, so he's the founder and CEO of F2 Pool, one of the biggest mining pools. And in around 2017, he he entered the DeFi stage,、um, seeing the opportunities in DeFi and the potential. He created the Cobol Wallet. And Discuss Fish has been analyzing and participating in various DeFi projects since the beginning of Compound Finance Liquidity Mining last year, and focusing on discovering innovative DeFi projects and deep diving DeFi security. He has produced project research articles, mining tutorials, and DeFi security alerts across multiple media platforms. His security,、uh, his security alerts in particular, has signaled thousands of core DeFi users、um, in the Chinese community before a protocol hack or early in a hack to help them reduce loss.、Um, DeFi is full of opportunities as well as risks. Investing in DeFi requires not only capital but also knowledge, experience, and wisdom. And judging the value of a DeFi project requires knowledge in products. Uh, community, tokenomics, and finance, as well as smart contract security. So this is not a task that one person or a few person, a few people can accomplish. It needs to rely on group group wisdom, and Aladdin Bell can effectively gather group wisdom and reach consensus as it grows as a DAO. Okay, back to DeFi Dad. Excellent. Thanks so much,、uh, Discuss Fish.、Uh, so、uh, next up, we have. 
forgive me if I mispronounce this, Kaoyin or Taoyin uh, from uh, DRF. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Hello, uh, Deepa Dad and uh, Shaling. I'm Chaoyin from the DRF. I'm the managing director of the DRF. And the DRF actually is somehow we label ourselves like the immersive kind of investment, you know, kind of, you know, a firm and also a consultancy team working with various kind of those DeFi, NFT, and DAO teams globally. And uh, we start somehow the investment, and in, I mean, this kind of, you know, practice from 2017. Actually, we are the first DeFi investor, angel investor in China since the very beginning of the whole industry. And uh, after that, we continuously somehow working and farming and investing into various kind of those uh, different projects globally as an engine invest. Actually, I'm not a very active trader, not very somehow active in all those flippers. I invest in a very early stage and also hold for a long time and working with various kind of those, you know, promising teams. Uh, providing my uh, expertise and also some resources, networks to those uh, projects. For example, just for example, like the Akala. Akala, I'm the solo, I'm the only uh, angel investor of Akala, which is somehow like the DeFi herb of the whole Polkadot ecosystem. I invested into Akala in the very early day, about uh, 2019, yeah, middle of 2019. And uh, I have been working with these young boys since then, providing a lot of those, you know, kind of, for example, like uh, project modeling and uh, algorithm kind of so shipping, something like that. And also marketing size and also a lot of those things. Akala is a good example to somehow, you know, experimentify the kind of, you know, this practice I'm, I'm doing with those teams. And besides these DeFi, you know, stuff, I'm very active working in those NFT, especially crypto art domain. Actually, I'm the first and also the biggest crypto art pieces collector in China since the very beginning of the whole domain. And uh, I invest into Superreal, and actually I'm the only investor of Superreal in China. And also some other fantastic projects, for example, like NFT and the Mint Base and the uh, uh, Pianity and the Top Beaters, and also a lot of those, you know, uh, crypto art platforms, marketplaces, and other protocols. And uh, by this kind of, you know, uh, playing with those uh, NFT stuff, I accumulated some kind of, you know, community within the Chinese speaking uh, world from Taiwan to China to, to Hong Kong, various kind of those, you know, regions. And uh, we are hosting uh, those kind of, you know, uh, events. For example, currently we are hosting a very interesting and in uh, kind of purely community-oriented uh, event called the Crypto, Crypto Art Panda. This is the first somehow purely community-driven, community-organized uh, uh, crypto art event in China. Uh, more than you know, 50 uh, artists and a lot of those other organizations uh, are, are, are participating in this event. So this is what I can bring in for the Aladdin DAO. Besides the DeFi size, besides the somehow, you know, kind of farming or mining size, I provide a lot of those spiritual things, community driven things into the Aladdin DAO. And I believe in that the next stage of the whole DeFi network, I mean, for the whole DeFi industry is somehow to combine those, you know, uh, 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 diversify the assets, for example, those crypto art pieces, like the pieces of people, the pieces of futures. Actually, I'm the first, first collector of futures. And uh, uh, besides those, you know, including those new assets, also social trading or community trading, I think will be the next somehow big thing in the whole community. Talking about social trading or the community things, not only somehow you can pro you should provide APY or API, these kind of things, you should also, you know, inject a lot of those things of fun or things of kind of sense of a collective identity in the community. This is what I can bring in uh, according to my experience and expertise in the crypto art and also in NFT domain. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, so next up we have, I just missed someone, so I'm gonna go back here a moment. Uh, 
Boy, actually, so I, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce your name uh, as well, if, if you don't mind pronouncing it. So thanks so much. There we go. Excellent. Hey,我是陆遥远,非常高兴有机会和这么多DeFiOG一起建设阿拉丁道。在中国社区的小伙伴可能更了解我一些,我目前是麦子钱包的产品经理,负责驱逐人化应用。因为麦子钱包支持60
Uh, could you hear me? Yep, coming in loud and clear. Great to meet you. Uh, great to meet you, and thanks, Divide Diet. Uh, hi, friends from all over the DeFi world. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here to join the greatest DAO ever in the history of DeFi uh, with so many talented people and organizations. So let me introduce myself. I'm Rambin Lee. I'm the founding partner of 7 Next Ventures. And you can call me Eraser. That's my nickname. Uh, so we are the first wave of investors who devoted in DeFi in China. Uh, we're the early investor of several exciting DeFi projects such as Dodo, Fruit Combo, and Kine. Uh, so before I uh, got into cri uh, crypto, I worked in Africa for uh, almost six years, uh, where I experienced two major fiat currency collapse, uh, which is Naira in Nigeria and Kwanzaa in Angola. So since then, I realized the importance of decentralized finance and started to have faith in decentralization and in crypto too. So I hold a, a bachelor degree of uh, computer science and a master degree from Univers uh, University of Waterloo in business. Uh, I'm very interested in token economics design and uh, I personally helped Dodo with their V2 version of token model, uh, where we have a very innovative dual token design separates the security feature from governance and the uh, utility. Uh, and I helped to design several other projects, token economics, uh, such as Mixed Marvel, uh, Rangers Protocol, and a very innovative ICTO model, which is uh, initial convertible token offering for Finexus. Uh, and if I get selected as a board member, I will help our community to analyze the projects we would farm and invest um, to better identify the risks and the benefits related to tokenomics. And furthermore, uh, and furthermore, I would help our portfolio projects uh, to make improvements on the token economic side. Uh, another thing actually to mention is that uh, my wife is also a leading crypto artist, also the founder of a great crypto artist DAO. So I hope I could uh, build the bridge across DeFi and NFT and art uh, to help a leading DAO to grow in the metaverse in the near future. Uh, thanks for supporting and uh, give it back to you, Defy Dad. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Mindao from DeForce. Hey, guys. Hey, there uh, we go. Uh, this is Mindao from DeForce. Um, I think as many of the candidates here uh, came from traditional finance background, uh, I myself uh, actually uh, was also from traditional finance background, and I uh, the first half of my traditional finance background, I deal with the bad guys and scammers. Uh, I engage in uh, distressed deal turnaround transactions. Um, at the time, I was in Hong Kong uh, with Standard Chartered Principal uh, Investment. And also, uh, later, I joined Honey Capital and, and mainly um, engage in gross capital, private equity, and buyout transactions. Uh, so helping the good guys to build out their businesses and scale up. Um, and I joined crypto in 2013. Um, at the time, mainly do Bitcoin arbitrage. Uh, is from fiat currency to uh, US dollar and Bitcoin arbitrage. Um, and we mainly trade uh, on BTCE and MTGOX. Uh, both of the exchanges uh, already cease to exist. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, as many of the um, early crypto participants probably remember, um, you know, for example, like um, Arthur Hayes also carry, carry a lot of cash uh, across the border to do uh, fiat arbitrage. At the time, it's, it's almost trading uh, the onshore premium is almost 50% uh, of the offshore premium. So it's crazy money. We call it like fear of farming, you can call it. Uh, and, and then I participated in uh, Ethereum ICO back in 2014. Uh, and later um, I invested in a number of other uh, projects. Uh, I go full in time, uh, I, I go full in uh, crypto uh, in 2017. Uh, at the time I founded Block Power Capital, which is a crypto investment firm. Uh, we invested in um, Filecoin, Tezos, uh, Decentraland at the time, uh, and already be uh, full-time in crypto. And then uh, I founded um, a hashing boat in 2018. Uh, this is a, a one of the leading um, uh, crypto uh, chrome trading firm in China with AUM across, uh, around uh, 300 million US dollar. Uh, and and um, we, we managed to arbitrage and, and uh, statistics arbitrage across different exchange. And also now we have uh, DeFi strategies added to the, uh, to the trading set. Uh, and found, I founded DeForce um, uh, in around late 2018 to 2019. Uh, we are the very first DeFi project coming out from China. Uh, and luckily we get the support from uh, uh, Shaling 
Uh, at the time she was at CMBI, uh, we are the first DeFi project in China have uh, support from, uh, from institution investor. Uh, and later we invested by uh, actually um, uh, Multicoin and Hobby Capital. Uh, and DeForce is basically uh, currently my full-time focus um, and um, we are building a protocol matrix, including lending protocols, stable coins, uh, synthetic protocols, as well as trading. Uh, and um, we, we both now uh, on Ethereum and, and BSC. So in terms of uh, my own experiences, as I already uh, did describe, I think it's quite diversified, um, uh, traditional finance, C5 plus D5, uh, you know, sort of combination. Uh, and, and I definitely believe that my own, uh, and also I do, you know, heavy farmings uh, in, in uh, compound curve uh, YFI. Uh, and my record so far is pretty good. I, I, I haven't had any sort of rec experiences uh, in DeFi, but I do have my own rec experiences in crypto, uh, which is empty gox. Uh, I still have like several hundred Bitcoin stuck in the limbo there because um, it, the liquidation process have, haven't really competed. Um, so I, I'm very glad that um, I, I will be able to join uh, the Ali and Dao, and hopefully I can share my experiences, uh, you know, with with the with with the, with the users on the platform, and and also uh, you know it's, it's very glad to be uh, to be here uh, to talk to you guys. Thanks so much, uh, Mindal. Um, great to meet you. Uh, next up, we have Jeff Shi. Oh, hey guys. Um, hey Jeff, there we go. Yeah, so I'm currently the fund manager for Unitary Yield, um, which is a yield farming focused hedge fund based in the US. Um, we kind of serve as a bridge for investors to get to on-chain yields. And our focus is generating income from, from stable coins as well as investor education. So my background is in like prop trading. Uh, I started as an options market maker and have been trading derivatives for over eight years. Um, I was a uh, head of volatility arbitrage for both um, covering both U.S. commodities as well as Hong Kong index options. Um, and I guess I got into crypto during the 2017 bull market, uh, mostly trading personal account, and then joined BitMEX in 2019, uh, rode that bull market, and then um, left earlier this year to start the fund. Uh, so within DeFi, I guess uh, my biggest accomplishment is not being rugged or exploited. Um, also being in farming and holding uh, both Wi-Fi and Curve. Um, so yeah, I guess as, as the manager of fund, a small fund, it's my job to find these kind of sustainable uh, alpha and strategies. And sometimes our, our capital remains in a pool compounding for you know months. Um, so, yeah, it requires you know deep diving into projects, tokenomics, the uh, the code review, and these these sorts of things uh, all affect my affect my reputation, you know, for the for the investors. So uh, I, I like to parlay that into into the DAO as well. Um, and yeah, I, I guess the thing that enabled me to transition from derivatives trading into DeFi so easily is that. Uh, the way I look look at markets now, um, <clears throat> essentially uh, understanding the market dynamics, uh, liquidity, order books, and and volatility, all kind of help with uh, evaluating a, a DeFi DeFi system. So yeah, along those lines, like I've never been severely wrecked um, because of my risk management philosophy. Uh, every system I break it down into. All, all the components, uh, any market risk factors, um, code risk, community risk. And uh, so I had a uh, in on Twitter account that I, uh, I commented that basically Iron Finance was going to fail because the um, collateral token Titan was hyperinflating. And so um, thus far, I've avoided any uh, severe rug pulls and exploits. So uh, thanks, everyone. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Definitely avoided a disaster there in iron finance. Uh, uh, so we've got three more candidates left. Uh, next up is Anthony Lewis. Hey, Anthony, nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you guys. I'll be I'll be quick because we're coming up to the end. I've been in crypto since 2013. I first joined uh, ItBit, 
which was what Paxos was called before it rebranded to Paxos, uh, which was originally founded in Singapore and then moved to New York. I uh, spent some time in enterprise blockchain, a company called R3, uh, which was a bit of a misadventure from a crypto uh, perspective, um, but gave me some balance there. Uh, in my day job, I work at Tomasek, uh, which is a Singapore-based investment company. Um, it's got a $280 billion balance sheet. And I lead, I, I lead our crypto investing efforts there. Um, going back in history, I, I wrote the first explainer on Ripple for Coindesk in 20, 2015, because I didn't really understand it. Um, I still don't really. Um, I started Then I started blogging on uh, my blog, uh, bitsonblocks.net, uh, trying to explain this technology to new people. Um, then wrote a book. Um, there you go. Wrote a book, which is uh, it's called The Basics of Bitcoins and Blockchains. It's used in some universities. Um, and my skill is explaining complex things simply once I can understand them myself. I find that you read a lot of white papers in this space. You don't actually really understand it until you can explain it simply. Um, I've lived in Singapore for 10 years. Uh, for the past eight years, I've been trying to build up the crypto community here um, using two methods. One is grassroots, so chat rooms, meetups, that kind of thing. And then top down through working with the regulators, trying to explain that it's not all bad actors. Um, in terms of ruggings, um, like a couple of the people on the call got rugged in Mt. Gox, uh, Bitfinex as well, but that was actually a positive rugging. If you converted your Bitfinex tokens to equity, you actually made money from, uh, from, from that. Um, and then eminence, I guess, which was uh, quite special because I think there was only an eight hour window where you could actually ape into that uh, before it got rugged. Um, so if you weren't paying attention, you, you couldn't have got rugged in eminence. Um, still farm a little bit, mainly on Solana now. Um, do some Steph uh, via Yen. Um, in terms of being a bull member, so I bring a slightly different lens to the others, I think. Um, we've got a lot of people from crypto natives uh, and, and, and crypto funds. Um, so you can see me as kind of bridging between um, crypto native and institutional capital and interest. Um, and investigating DeFi and DAOs is part of my day job. And I go back and report back on how it's, what it is and how it's evolving and how we should get involved. Um, and I'm personally looking to invest, um, so institutionally, but we're, I'm looking to identify and work with projects um, to see how we can engage, right? Especially with our tradition, with our traditional portfolio companies, our existing companies, um, and see how we can bridge the crypto native economy with the kind of muggle boomer economy. Uh, we should actually be beneficial to everyone. Um, so I'm excited to be considered as part of the Aladdin DAO. Thanks. Thanks so much, Anthony. Um, next up, we've got, so that we're down to our last two candidates. Uh, DeFi Prime, are you on? Not sure if DeFi Prime is on right now. Just double checking. No, I don't think so. Okay, we'll we'll skip him for now. And then, so we've got our last candidate um, and, and I'm gonna uh, ask you to also pronounce your name so I don't butcher it, but um, welcome. Yeah, thanks, DeFi Dad and Shali. Uh, I'm Zhishong Pan, Director of Research from Chain News. Chain News is a crypto and blockchain focused uh, media and research institute. We are the first batch to introduce DeFi in Chinese community and still have very strong focus on this specific topic. And about myself, before I join here, I work as, uh, in IBM as a platform engineer to support the very, er, very old stuff technology like the mainframe in COBOL language. That's why I quit IBM and joined the FinTech area, joined a wealth management company as a product management role to in charge of the trading platform like mutual funds or private placement. In 2017, I started to uh, join the crypto space and to research all kinds of crypto protocols um, and participate in some several ICOs like status.im or many dead projects. Um, in 2018, uh, I joined my token as a product manager. Product, my, my token is the top uh, market data platform in China with very huge uh, user base. But after one year, our brand or team and was required. So I quit the team and finally joined here as a media and research institute. Uh, about the, the achievement in DeFi, I really don't have much a huge achievement in DeFi, like manage how many assets, but I have small things to share. Um, when I check with my one of my Ethereum address, I found out I used uh, Iron Finance, uh, it's called Yearn Finance and Curve back in February last year. 
just several days after they deployed the smart contract on Ethereum mainnet. And after I uh, understand the, the mechanism of Curve's AMM design, I wrote a very comprehensive and easy to understand articles to Chinese community, which um, everyone using my style of telling to help new users to understand which is Curve. And after that, I talked with AC, the Andrea Kron, 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 Kronge, and about the hacker things um, back in February 20, uh, 2020. Yeah. And he called my article was most comprehensive articles to deep dive in Curve, Iron, and uh, attack event at that time. So I think it's very, it's very early in, in that at that time, um, very less people in Chinese community in no DeFi and it's February, 2020 last year. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and not, not a lot, lot of people know Curve and Iron at that time. So, so talk about my advantage and to how I can contribute to Aladdin DAO. I can summarize with three parts. The first is curiosity to drive me uh, proactively to latest and newest um, decentralized product uh, as my product management experience. Um, I check with my Ethereum address. I'm the very early um, users, real users of the Tornado Cash, Curve, Wire, and Set Protocol, or even uh, infrastructure level things like Aztec, Optimism, ZK Sync, and many more. The second, the second one is my experience in fintech area, which makes me understand the new DeFi mechanism component very quick and have the ability to help others to understand. I think it's very important to the whole DeFi community to, to that can, we can grow with more and more builders. The last part is um, my background of computer science, not only to understand the underlying blockchain, um, but also and help the you. I can use third-party tools. I will. I, I use third-party tools and roll Python to to make more deep analysis of the data, like the on-chain analysis data. And back in 2018, I in charge of an internal uh, research team to build on-chain analysis framework to analyze crypto exchanges wallets, to 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 cluster them. Yeah. Re recently, and I wrote a very short analysis of tracking the Ethereum genesis. Um, Genesis uh, holders, users, um, and publish an article. So in all, I would I will uh, leverage my capabilities to find the latest project, understand it, spread it, and deep dive and track the data of it. That's the, I, how I can help to contribute to Aladdin DAO. And thanks for your time. Yeah. All right. Um... That is it then. So we're, we're all done. Uh, uh, if there are any questions, we could run through those. Um, so you can unmute yourself and ask some questions or mention it in the chat here. But um, uh, really the, the next step here is uh, if you haven't already done this, you can follow uh, at Aladdin Dow. It's just exactly how it sounds um, on Twitter. Uh, if you go to aladdin.club, uh, that's the website if you've never visited it, uh, which it should have a link up top to view Aladdin DAO bull candidates. There will be a second session like this. So this was one of two and uh, uh, that date is yet to be determined, but I'm guessing it's going to happen within the next week. Uh, probably the most important thing is go to um, Aladdin.DAO and at the very bottom, there's a link to Discord. You'll want to join the community there to, uh, you know, stay up updated on, uh, yeah, the voting process for bull candidates. Um, Sherilyn, anything else that you think we should be covering? Yeah, uh, I think JX wants to bring up an idea to talk about uh, how we can build a research house powered by wisdom of crowd. Uh, on a lot platform. Jack, you want to go ahead? Yeah, thank you, Defender So, um, I've been thinking, um, uh, like, uh, I think they'll have uh, some and all the smartest uh, guys in the DeFi and, and crypto space. So, I'm, I'm thinking how we could, could best use of uh, our power uh, crowd, crowd crowdsourcing by everyone and, and uh, inspired and incentivized by the token economy. So um, I would like to like lead in to start with the research uh, trench um, together with uh, Johnson. So uh, we already cre created a tag, a Discord discussion channel in 
our in our in our Discord. Um, so uh, following up, we have several issues to be discussed. The first one is how and uh, when uh, the research in the research initiative should be built. My initial idea was that we can code a, code a community uh, like a research me meeting uh, every two weeks, but we can chat about new ideas and and. Uh, uh, in uh, either directions we have interesting uh, like every day or frequently on the Discord channel. And uh, based on everyone's contribution and uh, the uh, engagement, we can uh, set, a set a rating by uh, first by the board members and then by all the like all the maybe other in DAO token holder or, or, or everyone who's interested in participate and contribute to the DAO. And according to the rating, we can incentivize those people um, the uh, um, with the with that with a token, uh, with the token, and also um, uh, this is my first first idea, and I will summarize all the key points later at, at the Discord channel. Um, so yeah, please feel free to let me know who's interested in to be in joining the research like uh, in research change and research in initiative, and we we can discuss further maybe later. Yeah, we we can discuss in the separate channel meeting. Yeah. Yeah, get back to you today. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, because, uh, meaning, Johnson, do you have anything to add on top of that? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. So I guess like um, overall in terms of the whole, um, um, I guess that research industry is it's more like finding alphas. Um, so looking around, I guess, like, uh, 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 like say for example, recently NFTs is it's extremely hot. So where do you actually find these like newly um, uh, uh, sort of uh, open minting um, kind of things and uh, what to mean and what to what, what kind of like things to look for when you're actually minting NFTs, just taking an example, right? And also a lot of other stuff uh, around the like liquidity mining, uh, um, finding different new projects and also sharing ideas. I guess that's the whole purpose of the uh, um, the research uh, initiative, initiative um, in terms of uh, from the Aladdin DAO perspective. So, so pretty much, I guess, like uh, sharing alpha uh, and um, looking for, uh, I guess, things um, just and, and I guess like understand different um, um, sectors and also uh, industry perspectives from um, different sort of uh, group of people. So, sharing ideas and discussing. So, maybe looking uh, a single. Uh, um, issue from two different, very, very two different perspectives. So th I guess that's just my um, sort of add on, on on the research stuff. Yeah. So we're, we're having a sub down now <laughs> before we formally launch a lot in there. So it's a, I think it's a brilliant idea. So it's a research DAO powered by wisdom of crowd, right? I think this is the first ever experiment. Uh, since we already have, you know, so many brilliant minds together, right? And uh, I think it's brilliant uh, to form this research group and uh, people, you know, can participate, you know, in this uh, according to their own willingness. Uh, but you have to contribute, right? And to, to also gain insights from others as well. Uh, I think JX uh, and Mini, uh, it would be great if you guys can come up with, you know, a detailed proposal, how this should work. So people know how they can, you know, participate in this. And also I think, you know, you can, you can make a proposal on how the incentive would work, right? And uh, I think Aladdin DAO is happy to, you know, carve out some of the economics from the DAO Reserve Fund, right, to support this. I think that's it then. I think we're, I think we're all good to go. Uh, yeah, just uh, again, follow up in uh, uh, the Discord group if, if you want to have any more discussion and uh, uh, be sure to follow Aladdin Dow on Twitter. Uh, that'll help keep you updated on uh, future meetings and just next steps here. But we've got that second session that still needs to happen. Uh, so anyways, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I know we're all on very different time zones. So many of you are joining very late at night um, and uh, we'll look forward to collaborating in the future. And uh, thank Defy that, our super host, the one and only Defy that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much. Bye everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 See you.